How about there are some things that maybe we don't get to, we're not always talked about. For you big band players, and I play a ton of big band. How about articulations? How about shorts? Do, dot, dot, do. How many people do that when they're playing the drum set? Okay, I see these. Don't be afraid to raise your hands. <laughs> you know, I lost my, I lost my middle ear. Look, we write it, we see it in our literature as choke, right? Choke. But in a big band, the band's doing bop. Why shouldn't we do bop? Because this is what we this is what I hear when I judge competitions. Is that musical? If the band's going, is it? that we don't spend, at least I didn't spend a lot of time with it, was being able, we, you know, we have accents, you're right, but in a big band, they go do dot, dot, do, jazz players, do dot, do dot, dot, do dot, 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 and I'll play the same thing they're going to play. You're hearing what's going on. So that's what music is all about. There's a bunch of other things. It is expression. For me, it's a passion. There's, there's nothing I'd rather do. I, I could talk to you guys all day long, but you probably get bored of me. After long. I want you to think about something. I'm going to give this, I want you to think of how this equals to our melodic friends, or our traditional melodic friends. Our rudiments are to what in the melodic world, do you think? Scales. Scales. Our rudiments are their scales. If we think melodically. The groove, what do you think it is? In their work. Tempo, good one. Didn't think about that. I'm going to write that down. Like feel or size. Yeah, changes in the form. Changes in the form. The changes. If I play rhythm changes or play all of me or something. And for us, our independence is what in the, in the jazz world? <coughs> Technique, solo. But they're solo, right? So that's how we kind of mix ourselves in together with them. I'm going to read something to you. If I'd have had a big screen, it would work. I want you to hear the definition of listening. Now, I didn't pull this one on, perfect, on purpose, but it does work. To pay attention to sound and listen to music. That was in the dictionary. I didn't cheat. To hear something with thoughtful attention, give consideration, Listen to a plea. To be alert, and I think this is probably in what we do as drum set players, I'll speak as a drum set player, to be alert to catch an, an expected sound. How many people as a drum set player have soloed on a chorus with a horn player? No bass player? No bass player, no piano player. If you, ha if you haven't, do it. Next time you have a quartet gig or a quartet rehearsal, let, make the bass player stop, make the piano player, guitar player stop, and just play with the horn player. Get Dr. Adams here to do it with you. I've done it with him a couple times. Just solo, play, interact, question and answer. How many people have played pieces where there's question and answer? We all have. That's what we're doing in, the, in what we do. Um, what parts do you think there are in a, in a conversation? What kind of parts are there in a conversation? Right, question and reply, what else? Huh? The topic. All right. They're all good, come on. Yeah. How about tone? So, I developed these Musical conversation components, understanding, musical understanding. We're going to understand each other. If we're having a conversation about whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. Dinner, where we ate, McDonald's is terrible, although it's cheap. <laughs> Respect. This is something that I want you all to understand. There, we have to respect each other as musicians. We expect to be respected, respected as a drummer, right? 
How many times have you ever felt like you're in the corner as a drummer? Why well, too? But that's <laughs> okay. This is what I tell all my students, and, and I and I said this very intently and jumped up and down. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. Let another musician put you in the corner and say, okay, little boy, little drummer, you play over there, and we're, when we're ready for you to come out and play with the real musicians, we'll let them. Don't let them do it. I've had it happen to me on plenty of gigs. I don't put up with it anymore. We are musicians just like they are. Let them sit behind your drum set one time and drive a big band when they're complaining about time and watch what happens. I've done it. When I leave my big band at the community college and they go, they all start pointing at the drummer for Tom, I go, oh, 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 oh. and I walk over, and I go, here you go. All you have to play is the cymbal and the hi-hat. I won't even ask you to do anything else. You try it. And I've had some people do it. And they're like, I get it. They walk away. Don't let them do that to you. I, I'm sorry that I get up on that little uh, soapbox, but it's important to me. And then, of course, musical interactive listening. That's what I'm here to talk about. So we've talked about the components of music. We've talked about components of a conversation. There's two parts that I have with this. Interactive and passive listening. Let's talk about passive first. What do you think passive listening would be? To listen, but to not... Um, so like we're passively listening yeah. to you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. It's the art of listening to learn, understand, and enjoy. How many times before a performance of either a, maybe you're going to go play some Coltrane, or you're going to play some Stravinsky, or something like that, you spend a week or two listening to it. How many have done that? I hope we all raise our hand. When I get called to go do an R&B gig for a week before, I'm listening to R&B. Just to get my mind into it. So when you're listening, what are we listening for? Throw it out. What are you listening for when you, if you're listening to this, get ready for a gig, what are you listening for? Style. Style. Good one. Um, well, so the branch off of the style, um, like each style has its own set of ways that you would go about doing something that would be particular to that. So right. if I'm you know, like if I'm gonna go do an R and D gig or a funk gig or a church, like if I'm gonna go play gospel and just go to church, I'm not gonna listen to like speed metal or something right. 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 Exactly. Right. exactly right. But when you listen to it, here's the way that I think that you you can listen to it. You can listen to the form, where the breaks are where the solos are, where we go back to the top. Church music is forever throwing me for a loop because they do the chorus and then the verse one and then back to the chorus and then verse two and then they verse one again and they're back here and they're back there and it's all over the place. And it completely, you know, and they know if you, if you get the chance to go play in a church game, they know what they're doing. If you got to sit in and do it, I'm like, I just keep going two and four, two and four, and hopefully everything comes out in the end. Right? The groove, us as drummers, our number one, to me, our number one thing is groove. And I'm going to tell you my statement that it comes out in everything I write, every email I send, on every business card I put out. A groove is a terrible thing to waste. It is. I heard Dr. Humphreys that they were rehearsing. And she was talking about a piece, and she said, I know you guys are getting comfortable with that groove, but don't get too comfortable with the easy groove. And I went, ooh, the groove pops up again. I was doing uh, an orchestral, I was doing Bernstein, uh, Bernstein's uh, West Side Story dances. And the orchestra uh, at, at our college, was, and I'm sitting back there on my drum set, I'm trying to read all these stuff all over the place, and she goes, hey, hey, come on, we need a groove. And I went, wait a minute. And I'm in the orchestral world, and she's talking about groove, right? That's what's important to us. Don't let, don't let it go anywhere. And then I think you listen to instrument focus. And I've talked to so many people about it. What do you listen to? Do you listen to the drummer? Are you listening to the bass player? Are you listening to the words? Are you listening to the keyboard player? Are you listening to the harmonies? What are you listening to? For me, when I was growing up, 
and this is going to sound bizarre, the last thing I listened to was the drum. I know it sounds weird, but I listen to everything else. I listen to, if I was listening to Chick Corea play, I was more listening to Chick Corea and whoever he had on bass, it was Eddie Gomez or whoever it was. When I listen to the Keith Jarrett trio, and I'm kind of giving you, these are all suggestions, by the way, as they come out of my mouth. When I listen to the Keith Jarrett tri trio, I listen to Keith play, I listen to Gary Peacock, the bass player. Of course I listen to Jack DeJanet play. If you haven't listened to Jack DeJanet as a drummer, go out and buy some today. Not only is he an incredible drummer, but he's also a piano player. Now you're starting to see this whole, how many, people, how many of us percussionists play piano? How about guitar? All right, cool. Those who didn't raise their hands, go learn them. Please. It will help us. It helps as a drum set player to know what's going on. Man, how about that? I even spit out everybody I listen to. Um, the drummers I listen to. Spit out some drummers you guys are listening to. Ah, perfect. Good one. Buddy. Oh, yeah, monster. Buddy, don't listen to his tapes, though. He did get a little nasty sometimes. <laughs> I didn't know some people were like, oh, <laughs> so, You know, Buddy Rich, uh, he's just an amazing, you know he was self-taught, couldn't read, right? You know Phil Collins can't read. <coughs> when Phil Collins did his big band CD, they hired somebody else to play it, to record it, so Phil could learn it. Now he can't play anymore. I don't know if you've, everybody's heard that. He has some sciatic nerve issue and he can't sit down to play. Imagine all of us not being able to sit down to play our drums. You know how painful that would be? Take care of your bodies, by the way. I didn't mean to. Let's talk about interactivity. When somebody's soloing, what do you do? What are you doing now? What are you thinking about? The solos. The solos, all right. The melody. What's that? Where he's going to lead you. What about where you're going to lead him? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. We can quit now. He got it. <laughs> he's a little unfair because I've worked with him a couple years at, at Valley School. It's having a conversation. It's what we're doing now. You're listening to me, I'm listening to you. We're having a conversation. So, with that in mind, look, when do you think you step out and leave? Maybe when the soul is taking a break. Taking a break. Or sure. you're using the space. Right. You guys all here have heard Dr. Cook play. <coughs> right? Monster. with him a lot of times. Curtis, another monster tenor player. I've heard Ronnie play. Great drummer. Dave Marsh, I play with him. The key, to, the key to this is having a conversation. So in a minute, somebody can come up and have a conversation with me. I don't know what we're going to play. I didn't put a plant in the audience. No, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't bother me. We're going to have a conversation. How many people like jam bands? Fish. Not a huge fish fan, more of like on TV, but. Okay. You know, uh, who was it the one that was so famous? Um, Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews. There's a, all these are jam bands. What do you think they're doing the whole time? Listen. Listen. How many times have you seen a band play that you know they're not listening to each other? Right? All right, you can laugh, it's true. They're not listening to each other. <laughs> yeah. We're just having I've seen Metallica a couple times live, and that's. They're not listening to each other. You know, the whole idea is is for us to listen and to interact.